spot. But if you're just going to come here and just spurg out and try and get my channel flagged, then, uh, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, man. So we are live on YouTube. We are live on Rockfin. And I am here with the one and only Johnny Vedmore. I'm going to throw it over to you. Give you you can give a quick introduction. He is a uh, he's a great investigator. He's done a fantastic job on the, uh, specifically the Klaus Schwab family history. I love your article on Klaus Schwab family family history. But uh, yeah, give us give us a little background on yourself, Johnny, and then let's uh, we'll get into it. Right. Well, I'm Johnny Vedmore. I write at the moment for Unlimited Hangout, my own site, which is johnnyvedmore.com. Um, I, I've been writing for about six, seven years, probably researching for like 10, 11, 12, 13, all my life, maybe. You know, I, I, I some people have got this want to know information, and I always had that want to know information. So I'm from a place uh, called uh, Cardiff in Wales. Um, Wales is like on the side of England. Um, we're officially Britain, but that was made by some guy 500 years ago. Uh, so we're very different people. Um, we have our own uh, actual, yeah, our own language uh, that dates from Celtic origins and stuff. So um, I, I, I was very much into my own culture for a long time. Um, saw my culture being destroyed, being um, modernized in a way that I didn't understand could try to enter into some form of political discourse about it and then discovered the world of politics. You know, I, I grew up from a family which was relatively poor. We had some we had some very, very poor times when I was young, some very shivery times in the house. Um my 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 dad comes his his mum and dad were um uh landlords. Um they go back probably to Welsh miners like everybody and everybody's family does. But they landlord is like looking after a pub is like the the, the, the I don't know if you use the same term in America. I've never thought about it. Um, but then, uh, and then my mum's side of the family uh, also kind of went to landlords, but also went into mining. My dad was a steel worker. My mum used to wash test tubes in in uh, the Heath Hospital, the hospital I was born. Like, so we we were very very normal. I was having a normal everyday uh, existence. I loved uh, partying. I loved drugs i loved music i loved all of these things that kind of drove me in a path towards insanity like everybody does who loves all of these things of course because at the same time you're taking in all of this information all the time and you just become more cynical about everything cynical and cynical and cynical and by like 2013 2014 i was just hyper i just wanted to shit post i just wanted to to like i i, I was fed up a little because there was no way to actually and i tried to to fundamentally look at all the systems or how everything works try to understand where it goes wrong but it's everything you know when you use the term systemic there's like a massive uh overarching um amount of uh, standard operating procedures rules regulations placed all around the place intricately over time that are so hard to undo that you can't like uh change society by just changing a little bit here or changing that you can't just say i need um more pay for nurses and doctors um <laughs> I, i'm talking about arguments of the past i'm not sure people will be quite on board <laughs> with that right now um but you know you can argue for things like um uh, bonuses to so, so care systems and things like that um and at the same time uh, uh you know you can't make change you just can't make change and that got me down that got me really researching and really looking in and i thought right okay my first entry into writing was looking at a woman named laura koonsberg who was um made pbc head political editor um and i wanted to understand why uh someone could go on on screen and say so many things that were untrue with such a you know strong confidence i wanted to understand these people i would go in the next few years through like a a, a route through psychology understanding um uh, how people work um what what they see as identity what you see as self and stuff um to try and understand these people from the different uh, uh like context and this is really what what my my 
writing career has been all about now. It's about context. It's about building context and documenting properly. Um, journalism used to be about keeping a journal. It used to be about keeping documents, evidence. Now it's about writing like a, a, a story that's like a thousand words long that tells you what a government, one quote or two quotes from what a government official told you is the truth. Um, and then it's, it's, it's dressed up to look like journalism. And I wanted to do something that was different. I wanted to look at the context because whenever you look at the context, Context, um, of any situation that's negative that's happening in this world nowadays and you look at the people involved and then you look at the context of their lives their existence you go back through their history you see who brought them up where they were living at the time what their situations were um who who uh they loved and who they hated what their ancestors did going back sometimes hundreds sometimes i go back like 700 to a thousand years through ancestry ancestry galore trying to trying to you know understand what made and what defines these people who are so uh, ever present i started that off with with laura coonsberg and then um i looked into Theresa may's father uh in 2016 that was quite popular I, that, that got me a little tiny bit of a name uh, uh for myself because um he had worked in a hospital with a man called dr john bodkin adams who was one of the biggest serial killers in history he is uh the harold shipman of his day he killed over 130 of his patients 100 30 of his patients over like just a couple of decades and had them write him in nearly every single one of their will and took nearly all of their estates it, it, it was completely a story of amazement and and the prime, the woman, this, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, uh, all, all of that i mean uh, at the moment i'm trying to form my site properly but but if you go in there there is a search bar down at the bottom if you put in Teresa may's father or may's father it'll come up pretty quick um I mean that that basically that that went back into the history of the the father of the woman who was about to become prime minister. You know, a lot of people were the 2016 election over here was people just shouting, shouting and screaming. It was like the establishment was terrified by this new figure that had come up that was socialist, but also was like you know he, he's pretty weak. This Corbyn character is coming up, and I really desperately wanted to see a hit against the Conservative government. And I thought my own part, I, I can't be like thinking that I'm going to change the whole world, but I can put out the right piece of information to make people study a character more and then ask certain other questions about other things. Because in actual fact, her father had worked in a, a diocese, as it's called, uh, which was a church area um, in um, uh, uh, West Sussex and um, Sussex proper where where he had been based in Eastbourne Hospital where he had worked with this serial killer which is on the south coast of England is a very nice quaint place very small now, now her father um, you, you say diocese was he was he like a in the church was he clergy in the church of England yes he was yes he was he was and he would have promotion through the church after working with Dr John Bodkin Adams and I th that was all hushed up you see the John Bodkin Adams affair he basically got off with everything they let him they they did him on minor charges faking prescriptions things like that they did not everybody knew the evidence was all there but the nhs this uh, public health service had only just been created and was being constantly attacked and they thought that if this doctor who you know was like had murdered all of these patients and had them rip people off if that came out then that would be bad so it went through like a court process and basically got stopped from being a doctor for 10 years and then allowed back on to be a doctor again um, oh, nice. Nice. i mean it's kind of like jimmy savile where it's like yeah they say everyone well, at the BBC knew about Jimmy Savile, yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. they did nothing. And, you know, Savile interfaced with a lot of these people uh, uh, that, you know, we're going to be talking about today. I mean, we're yeah. I want to focus on Klaus Schwab, your Schwab family values. Yep, are, yep, 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 yep. Which is, well, well, basically, I've, it's led me, my, my investigating people and in context has led me to things like this Schwab article, which is, yeah, a, a really, I am. I, 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 it was a, a no brainer as well. I work within like a lot of my articles are looking into family histories of the, the wealthy and trying to find the links that, that aren't given by other people. Um, and cause, cause a lot of this information, of course, uh, they, they micro task these things out to make sure that they censor every piece of information. They hide all the information. They have it deleted and pulled down. And a lot of it, you would have to know where it was originally, which site or something it'd be originally 
actually posted on to even find it in the archives. And a lot of the archives are getting attacked nowadays and getting pulled down, so we don't get to see these things as often. So it was a no-brainer to look into Klaus Schwab. The, 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 there was a lot of rumors around. Um, I, I've, I, I, well, there, there was like Owen. I mean, before you published this article, it was very difficult to find any information about the history of Klaus Schwab, about his family. I mean, I remember looking and doing a shallow dive and just thinking, wow, this is this man has no past. He's got no history. And it seems like actually your article has changed even the Wikipedia. Since you published your article, <laughs> Wikipedia has been edited and people have been forced to you know discuss this a little bit more. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And I, I think it's, um, it, it's a rolling ball of an article. I try and do that. I try not to make my article too much of the time. When I started off and I was doing things that were, were more politically based, um, uh, I mean, once upon a time, I would have considered myself on the left of politics and all of this. But I mean, after research in politics and politics, politicians and psychology i understand that i am not on a left or a right or or we're classed as sensual and limited hangout but really it's like you're either in for the truth or you're in for the lies you know um the the uh thing about klaus schwab was uh starting off you have to sift for all the information and there was so much more in the way of rumors than there were of any facts and all of the facts had been carefully shimmied away it took me a probably um a month and a half of really heavy research in just like one certain area to confirm who his father was beyond a shadow of a doubt like free sources on who his father was um and that had been just i there were some people who had cottoned on to it there had some people but they hadn't like i mean they what, what's amazing when you're going to do research nowadays you have got a lot of help there's a lot of people out in forums and every time someone writes down a piece of information they find somewhere that's going to be useful because we then go and find that we then go verify it we look for the actual evidence around it and then we're left with the evidence it's like um, a kinder egg surprise or whatever you have over there it's got a lovely little toy inside it's got something that's really going to help me or somebody else doing our, our research to to get to a certain stage really quickly and it was um you know it was really hard to do that with schwab because there was so little uh in the way of of information and really it, it, it once it there was one document that really sealed it for sure and i can't remember how i came across it but it was it was um indirect it wasn't by looking for his name it was by looking for something else and i came across this document which was his um family uh naming him and his father and his uh, mother at uh, his actual mother, not, and there's another rumor about that that we can talk about that I can seriously dispense of because I've recently, I, you know, that can be something that's exclusive for your show. So, a truth about Klaus Schwab that people believe, some people in the research community believe wholeheartedly. I once believed and I've recently f debunked um, and that's about his mother because uh, they, 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 we'll talk about that on Rockfin. Um, but with, with, with relation to, to this is like, once I got to that, uh, point of actually identifying who his father was, and it was like trawling through all of the history of, um, his father was weird. A lot of it, I had to go to Swiss newspaper archives from, from like, and, and I mean, everything's written in crazy fonts. Everything's in French or German. It well, where is do you so... Get the, uh, the Swiss uh, newspaper archives is like Lexus Nexus, or what are you using? For no, no, I, I, God, Lexus Nexus. I don't like that. Me and me and Lexus Nexus also uh, almost come to blows in pieces or pieces at one point. They're 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 naughty. I do not like them at all. I do not. We can we their use is who they allow their uh, use of access to their most important databases and the databases that should be held. Um, they're giving them to people like Black Cube and stuff. Um, so Israeli intelligence is getting all the court information and other things and private information. They then use that to black 
blackmail people who uh, uh, and in turn control society manipulate society that's oh, done so you, you're saying that the the people who access articles on lexus nexus that's database and 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 Lexus Nexus sell off certain databases to certain people through certain yeah. other companies. So, well, like, I remember being at the university and the access that we had uh, to these databases, it was like it was pretty amazing. And this was yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. do you know there's a lot? There's a lot of other databases out there that Lexus Nexus gives to people that you don't have access to a tool and if you saw them they would scare you because it's literally the records the most personal records about you are also there but you have to pay extra and i i had um <laughs> yeah, that's a story. i mean if, you're, if that, you don't have a university like id if you're not in a university to get access to these uh lexus nexus databases it's very difficult yeah, so you have to buy contracts. You have to basically um, buy subscription to LexisNexis stuff through uh, uh, subsidiaries or, or uh, parts of other people. I think Law360 might be the one, um, or C D T uh, CWTA. It's one of the two that I, I was involved with in, in, in an article that I, I wrote where I, I managed to um, find all of the contracts that are paid by uh, people to get access to these databases and included Israeli intelligence black cube. Um, that was through um, a, a, a technique of data diving well, where you can... What's wrong with these philanthropists accessing databases? Um, well, <laughs> that, uh, I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that uh, uh, ostensibly there is a lot to be said for accessing information. It's good for for me as a researcher. I love it. If you're not doing anything wrong, then what's there not to find? But when you get down to the real details, the real details, these things just feed in the ability for intelligence agencies to manipulate society in a way that they, it makes you realize they shouldn't have access to that information. And and that it's who these people then sell this stuff onto. But yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole uh, thing I got about Lexus, Nexus, and this sort of thing. But for, it was Swiss. There's um, a, a, a certain national Swiss uh, newspaper archive that I, I, is vital something or other i i i, I couldn't tell you because as soon as i bookmarked these things you know i'm using them um there's also a mittels find them online or something like that you know i don't i with german i have like a, some very bare knowledge of german um i had to go through translation so every time i'm going through one of these things i'm having to translate it uh and then go back and look through and make sure the translation's right and then double define it and etc but when it comes to french i can speak a bit of french i lived in france for a short amount of time met a girl when i was like 25 and like moved over to france with her and lived a bit on over there in um in a, a place called leon rhone alps area which got really interesting history uh and and it was a really really nice place as well like you know extreme division within society between white people and people who aren't white really extreme divisions um so i can i can like sort of navigate around french a bit um i I'll always I, I'd never trust my own ability to translate articles, so I always put them through some form of translator, or I I, I send them to someone who I know is going to be able to tell me what it actually says if it's of importance. Because a lot of the time you're sifting for names and stuff, and there's not going to be that much information. So you're left when you're looking for a very uh, certain person at a certain point in history, and you're going back to the night like 1914, 1950, 1923, whatever. Um, you no longer find an abundance of information you only find very specific matches that really really like you know lead you on a trail that you you go down and and that trail for schwab was um quite fantastic and and one of the the uh the room the rumor we'll talk about his mother later is that the, the, his mother was actually his real mother was jewish and in 1938 they shipped away his real mother and got him a good nazi bride his last his father Klaus, Klaus schwab's father a man called Eugen Schwab, and, and uh, what an apt name, Eugen. So it's not Eugen, and I Eugene Eugen, which is Eugen. You know, the base word for 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 eugenics, which of course a a, ta a common tie that binds a lot of these people as far as the worldview goes, right? I mean, like you said in the beginning, um, and this is why I love your work. It's it, 
a lot of people get caught up in, uh, you know, details of what people are doing. But I think what we need to be exploring more is what drives these people? Why are they doing this? What is the mm -hmm. world? What is their their view on reality? What is their history? And it, it, it's our thoughts, it's our ideas, it's our beliefs that influence our behavior uh, far more than our genes, which is, you know, a lot of these people have the belief that your genes are what influence your behavior. Yeah. More than your what is interesting, though, is that the reason why they get away with that and the reason why it persists as an idea is because there is a little bit of truth in there. There is a little bit of truth. Now, when I look at family histories, what I'm looking at is this dazzling saga of people that goes back hundreds of years and goes through all sorts of crazy times and periods of swords and armor to, to courtrooms to, to, you know, all, all sorts of like sort of bizarre behavior going on and you see the same traits pop up over and over and over again there was one family a lady who passed away last year who was a very controversial barrister who, um in the uk she was uh, originally classed as an irish woman she was colonial british really from 500 years ancestry she was colonial britain and none of the ancestors had changed from that they had been put into ireland by elizabeth and the court to as a family to kind of like start ruling over parts of of Ireland in an administrative fashion so that basically then in a hundred couple hundred years all of the people rely on your administrative work anyway in the area to for society to be cohesive and later on you own the place and it becomes just a colony and it was like the beginning of the colonization of stuff and her family was really interesting well she defended people like Rolf Harris and Jimmy Savile she tried to have the uh, she wanted and campaigned for the age of consent to be reduced uh, to 13 years old old and uh, I, I mean that it's is something that was uh, a lot of her friends um uh, were in the same way uh, inclined to that if you follow a family history what you discover going back over and over and over each generation is that they were all contrary to what society were at the time every single one of them would do the opposite a great ancestor of her from like 300 years before had um had uh been a, uh, a Protestant living in Catholic Ireland and would fight on the Catholic side against the Protestant armies during the, the war there when there was a, a, a big rebellion and then a war. Um, even after his mum, like a few years or 10 years before, had been her body had been dug up by Popish rebels and like displayed on the lawns to shame the family. They still fought alongside the side of the Catholic. Her, her grandfather had shot a woman in a pantry for no reason like a servant woman who he was he, he was fi fine with everybody and then one day he just went up to her and just shot her in the back and killed her they were from lords and etc etc all of them though when you look at what they said out loud and what they did were contrary all through so they have a trait they have something about them something that comes out a manifestation of the genes so what they say about the idea of it is right now what the difference is between the way i look at it or the way you look at it and eugenics as a principle, which eugenics is is not just um, there's like history, there's there's ge genetic traits that come out in your family. It's about the best creating and and manifesting the best genetic traits. And yeah, and then who decides who's the best? Well, it's of course yeah. it's like a it makes right thing where it's like, well, we're obviously we've got the most money, so we're the top of the genetic, you know, the the genetic dung piles what i would call it yeah. of these some of these people but uh you know we, we're clearly the tip of the spear of evolution we are uh we are the most the most highly advanced and it's like the darwins and the wedgwoods that were interbreeding for generations they yeah i talked to uh, I, I, to, yeah yeah, well, yeah they, they, I, they, they I, developed I, to basically justify their idea of them being genetically su superior to everybody yeah, yeah, and this was needed back in the past. You know, but once upon a time, before people could communicate en masse, every single person in society knew their place and things worked as these wealthy people and these elite families wanted to. Everything went swimmingly for them. They sat on verandas, eating cake, drinking the most fabulous champagne around. They still do this. They still do this, but they're criticized and they're aware of it. And they want more. They want those people who criticize them all through their life for the, the gifts that were given to them by some form of um, virtue of their family or etc. They want those people who have bullied them through their lives about that and look down upon them for being above them. 
them. They want to hurt those people. They want to they want to shame those people. They don't they become detached from those people because they were never one of those people. They don't have context. They don't bother going and you know their idea of um the who the working class are is uh, from things like Dickensian stuff like Oliver Twist or something, you know, their, their idea of who the plebs in society, as they call them over here, are the the the, the, the useless eaters, as uh, the World Economic Forum uh, speaker no, Yuval Noah Harari once said, the useless eaters, and and is is been around since uh, Nazi times, etc., um, and before uh, probably Th these people uh, have they see you they see something they see look these people have all of these traits so let's not have those people who have the bad ones and let's only keep the good ones that's it not looking at it all and going what a fantastic dance this is i'm i find it beautiful it's a fantastic dance of a load of different family trees and history from over a load of different through culture changes galore, through society changes, through natural evolution of a species, everything that goes around it. That is a beautiful thing. But the only conclusion you should come to at the end is that people are quirky and we should live our lives the way not we should kill people. <laughs> we should kill people. That's what they come to the conclusion. They come to the well, conclusion. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's there's a very different way of looking at humanity that you see this common thread with the elite i mean they obviously yes. don't they don't see the world like you see it they don't see the world like i see it they you know when you look at guys like and we pull that picture back and pull back the picture uh we've yeah, got Klaus yeah, Schwab the, in the middle of henry kissinger you know famous okay uh, do you know who the guy on the other side is do you know who the, the guy on the other side is yeah Ed, yeah, yeah yeah edward so, heath uh, Go, on, Go ahead. Give us a little bit of background on Edward Heath, and then we're I mean, we're on YouTube and Rockfin right now. Everybody who's watching on YouTube, big shout out to you guys. Uh, luckily, we're going to be going uncensored on Rockfin in a few minutes, right? Where we don't have to worry about what we're saying. We can talk about current events, which are basically you know uh, sidelined by the algorithm. We can talk about uh, the you know the effects of the World Economic Forum and the, the effects that they're having on the world today, and how this all goes back to the uh, the. Uh, the, the the root of the the Klaus uh, Schwab family tree and this uh, you know this technocrat that was born out of the era of the Second World War born of a father named Eugen <laughs> was you know name uh, name has the same base word as eugenics. We're going to be talking about all of this, so we're going to be going deep here with uh, investigator Johnny Vedmore, who's done a fantastic job uh, in, in in his work on. The, uh, the Klaus Schwab in his article here, the Klaus, the Schwab family values that you can find at unlimitedhangout.com. If you're watching on YouTube, let me just, uh, I'm throwing the link. The link is actually pinned in the chat. It's the first link in the description of the video right now as well. Go over there to Rockfin. It's free to watch on Rockfin while we're live, especially. Uh, this episode is going to remain free on Rockfin. It will be free and 100% uncensored over there. Jump over there to Rockfin because guess what? YouTube is a dying platform. Rockfin is a growing platform. We can speak freely over on Rockfin. You can, uh, you can, you are not forced to eat the bugs, to live in the pod, and to uh, to allow big tech to genetically select your future mates <laughs> over on Rockfin. You can choose who you watch. You can choose who you listen to over there. And uh, we invite you over there to Rockfin, which we're going to transition to in just a few minutes. But um, yeah, excuse the. Uh, the interruption there, Johnny Vedmore. Go ahead, uh, jump back in. I know you were uh, you you were going deep on uh, a little bit of the uh, the roots of Klaus Schwab's family values, as you call yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. Well, we were we were talking about that picture, which shows uh, Henry Kissinger, of course, um, Klaus Schwab, and a man called Ted Heath, who would be Prime Minister, Conservative Prime Minister of the UK between 1971 and 1974. Um, Harold Wilson would come after him, who was Labour Party and was. Uh, Hated by the establishment. Now, now Ted Heath is an extremely weird, fascinating, and horrible figure. Um, you cannot. I, I don't. I don't think you can find someone who is more uh, dastardly than this man. Uh, but his history is quite a, a amazing. He was bought. Uh, he, he went to. Um, I think he went to Wellesley House uh, School, which was uh, the deputy headmaster at the time was um, a very famous pedophile priest who stayed bottom spank the very elite pupils. And some of the people he was in school with, the 
there would go on to like manufacture the next bit of society with very famous uh, politicians and other movers and shakers. But then after that, he would, um, before uh, going to university, I believe it was, would go on a little tour of Europe with a friend. Now, Ted Heath always claimed he was asexual. And it's really weird that someone of that stature in society has to come out and say, I'm asexual. Um, and there was a whole reason behind that, uh, of course, for that. Um, now, some people believe that he is is first like love, whereas his boyfriend, who later be a millionaire lord, uh, I can't remember quite his name, um, uh, he went for uh, a, a, a tent tour just the two of them around europe in 1938 which included stopping by and watching hitler speak at one of the most famous rallies just before the war and then having to smuggle themselves out of the country just as war began and you know a, a lot of ted heath when you you learn about his history then it's all going into the halls of you know oxford and and cambridge and the like and and go, uh, turning in big circles Eventually, he gets into politics and he goes up into a position where he's obviously leader of the party. And then when he's uh, prime minister, he enacts a load of changes, including the creation of the UK social services. And UK social services are the people who deal with kids and family problems and things like this. Yeah, it's like the CPS and, of the UK. In the US, that's called the CPS, which are notoriously yeah, yeah. involved in, you know, you know, the things that we can get deeper into when we're just on Rockfin in a minute. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, well, all of all of that stuff was going on. All of that stuff that you allude to there um, was going on from the creation. And it was created and, and put together by a man who's actually on a, an amazing William F. Buckley um uh, I can't remember his name. I always forget this guy's name. It's so terrible. Uh, he's a guy who, who was put in charge of creating it. He was a Tory politician. And um, yeah, he, he was a dastardly man himself. But there's lots. Anyway, I investigated lots of care homes and places that were used basically for trafficking sex, uh, good children for sex to um, uh, politicians at the time. And there was one guest house in particular that we can talk about on Rockfin if we do choose to talk about Ted Heath at all uh, later on. There's one particular one uh, where he was famed to have gone there with a fair few people who was on the register. Um, all of the the people who had come into contact, there was people. There was people who uh, survivors who came out. They've been completely ignored, of course, um, and they've been uh, micromanaged. Uh, he was a friend of Jimmy Savile. You can find pictures yeah. of Ted Heath with Jimmy. I mean, they they were really. That's what I was going to ask I, I remember friend. hearing him being accused of. You know, he was the the Jimmy Savile Prime Minister. He, some of survivors said that he was part of the gangs that were you know involved in these situations that jimmy well Sabbath both both of them both of them had links to uh jersey and guernsey and haute de garenne and a child a ch a children's home over there and ted heath was an infamous sailor he would take his his uh i think it was called like something like the morning glory or some shit like that i wish it should probably been called the morning star maybe it was um but but he, he would he would go out and there was there was lots of rumors and lots of other things and his basic thing that the thing that was said about him was that he used to wear a steel hand um, and, and used to touch children, uh, na naked children, with the steel clawed hand and cry at the same time. And that was his thing. Wow. And there was other. Make, were, what a straight, like, if you know, who's going to make a story like that up? I mean, this is like, it, it's, yeah. so, it's so visceral, it's so disgusting. Uh, the thing is, is that the the the, tr the the fuller story of that is is really oh. really dark and deep. And the woman who run that um uh, that place with her husband um and was really just like it, I I think it was like an elite compromat unit. So it, they would get in the politicians who didn't care, who were working for the establishment anyway, but also new people who would then be recorded doing this stuff, have photos taken of them doing this stuff, and then that yeah, would be used yeah. to control. Well, and then, then you got Klaus Schwab right in the middle there with henry kissinger i mean these notorious yeah. eugenicists uh you know we've got a war criminal there on the left hand side uh heath who instrumental in setting up what was it called child services like the cps um, yeah yeah well well the, his government was and it was um oh, i wish i could remember his name oh god he's such a a famous character and and he's always on the tip and i've i've, I've written to, I wanted to do a really deep dive he's on a William F Buckley and if you watch him he's talking about children from bad backgrounds at one point and he's like his lips quivering and he's sweating and his eyes are rolling up into the back of his head and these guys are some of the most sickest 
people around. If anybody wants to know about that story, they can go on, on onto my website and put in Kendall House, K E N D A L L House. Um, learn about the Reverend Nicholas Stacy. That article's called uh, a quote that he said. Um, th this is a man who is in all of these circles and was put in charge by this politician of one area, of Britain, Kent, of uh, the social services there. And then I looked at the the things that happened there, and there was lots of terrible things. And it seems like even maybe GlaxoSmithKline uh, were doing things within that thing as well. But I won't say too wow, much. Wow, wow. So we've come we full circle there with our friends at the pharmaceutical industry. So <laughs> yeah. really instrumental in bringing about this new stage of transition, right? And you mentioned the, uh, the, the revolutionary actions of a lot of these characters that do seem to have a generational aspect to it. Uh, the, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, these grand influences of society, uh, it's, it's amazing how many strange connections there are between them. So Klaus Schwab, the Schwab family values, <laughs> well, which the values seem to be all about destroying things like family, <laughs> nations, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah. individual, uh, hey, human biology itself, even in this new transition, yeah. that kind of transhumanist phase. So that's what we're talking about. When we go over there to Rockfin, guys, we are transitioning right now where we are 100% uncensored. We don't have to worry about weird algorithms getting hit with stupid community strikes for nothing, right? Um, and uh, and we invite you all to come over. Join us over here on Rockfin. It is free on Rockfin, 100% free. Get over there right now. If you haven't already made an account on Rockfin, it's free to make it. Uh, you can, of course, if you wish to upgrade to a subscription, you can. At least half the content we got over there on Rockfin, 100% free. And then we've got premium members content over there as well. You can find Whitney Webb over on Rockfin. Our friend Jay Dyer is over there on Rockfin. You got Sam Tripoli up on Rockfin now. Um, uh, you know, we, we talked to David Patrick Harry the other day. He's over on Rockfin now. We talked to Made by Jim Bob the other day. He's on Rockfin now too. A lot of our buddies in the space are on Rockfin for a good reason. Get over there right now. We're going to transition over there. I'm going to end the broadcast on YouTube because guess what? YouTube is a you know, very self-destructive uh, and, and, and content creator destructive platform, whereas Rockfin is doing the opposite. So join us over there. And uh, again, if you, uh, uh, you go over there to Rockfin, you can make a, an account for free and watch for free. And of course, make sure to check out Johnny Vedmore's website, johnnyvedmore.com. You can find the information that he was just discussing, these articles that we were just discussing over there. So get over there to Rockfin YouTube. Let me just, I got like a 15 second delay here. So I'll uh, uh -huh. uh, make sure I'm <laughs> I know what to do with a 15 second delay.